we have to recognize that there has been a, a pretty dramatic behavioral shift that's occurred since 2016 when AirPods debuted, more so like 2017 and on because they came out in the Christmas season. For Monday, August 12th, 2019, this is episode 45, Hearables and the Future of Audible Social Media with Dave Kemp. Dave is an expert on hearables, which are smart, wireless in-ear devices such as Apple AirPods. And they're probably the future of voice, more so than smart speakers. Dave and I talked about ambient computing from Alexa to wearables to the connected car. And interestingly, we touched on the dire need for curated content to replace the noisy and overwhelming experience of social media today. Plus, hear how Alexa flash briefing might be the first iteration of that improved content experience. Thank you to our sponsor, Trinity Audio. With Trinity Audio, you can turn your blog readers into listeners by turning your written content into lifelike speech. Trinity Audio lets you audiofy your entire website for free. Visit trinityaudio.ai to learn more. Welcome to the Beatle Moment Marketing Podcast, a short weekly exploration of marketing, technology, and career. I'm Emily Bender. I answer to no one, and I make this for you. Let's get on with the show. Welcome back to the Beatle Moment Marketing Podcast. I'm Emily Bender, and I'm here with a special guest today, Dave Kemp, the Business Development Manager for Oak Tree Products. Oak Tree is a distributor to the hearing healthcare industry, and Dave also publishes a daily Alexa flash briefing, an article on his blog, Future Ear, where he covers the intersection of hearables and voice first. Dave, thanks so much for taking the time to chat today. Absolutely, Emily. Thank you for having me on. This is great. It is so great. So you are the hearables guy. You are you are the guru <laughs> of hearables. Everybody knows Dave is hearables. Can you explain to us what are hearables? Sure. It's so funny that I'm I'm now, quote unquote, the hearables guy, but uh, I'll take it. So, you know, if you think about wearable technology being body worn computers, you know, in that the most uh, the thing that people think about the most is like wrist worn wearables like an Apple Watch. But what we're starting to see is body worn computers move toward the ear. And so that's kind of in itself defined itself as hearables. It was a term that was defined by uh, a wireless analyst named Nick Hahn uh, back in 2014. And that's sort of when these devices started to emerge. They were, uh, there were a handful of startups that um, were sort of painting the picture of where this technology was ultimately kind of going to go. But they, you know, like many hardware startups, ran into issues with funding and uh, two of the major ones went bankrupt, Doppler Labs and Braggy. And with those, um, they, you know, they kind of gave an idea of where this might ultimately go. And that is what brought us to the point with Apple and Apple's AirPods. Um, but that's kind of where we are is, is, you know, it went from being something that was real uh, startup intensive. And then you had this lull and then Apple came in and introduced AirPods. And uh, that's ultimately, you know, kind of what made hearables a thing in 2016 when they came about. Right. So those first gen AirPods, I think when they when they came out, people probably didn't realize just how powerful they were going to be. They're like, oh, they're ugly. No one will use those. <laughs> but what have you seen happen since then? Yeah, it's actually it's it's a really interesting thing because you're right. Like when they first came out, they were ridiculed and mocked like <laughs> endlessly. They were dragged on the internet. People were like, they look like little uh toothbrush heads that people put in your ears. But you know, lo and behold, Apple is selling, I think there's analysts that are saying they're going to sell anywhere from 50 to 60 million this year. Um, So they're clearly a a runaway hit that Apple has. And if you look at, you know, Apple's finance financials, you'll see that, um, you know, in their latest earnings report, it was the first time in seven years where more than 50% of the revenue that Apple generated came uh, from sources outside of the iPhone. It was the first time again in seven years. And so where that revenue is coming now from is with service. So like Apple Pay, I think this new Apple Card is going to be huge. And then also with its wearables. And uh, so because of this, now we're starting to see, and and, and this ties into the voice space, that the other um, smart assistant providers are starting to get into this hearable space. Uh, You had Google introduce their Pixel Buds, which to be honest, aren't 
great, but I think that they'll iterate on them and, and they probably will get better and better. Samsung introduced the Galaxy Buds. Uh, and then you also have Microsoft with uh, some type of Surface headset that will be making its way to an earbud form factor as well. And then the 800 pound gorilla, Amazon, uh, is set to introduce some type of hearable here in the, the late half of 2019. Yeah. And so with, with all of those hearables that you just mentioned, which ones have a voice assistant and, and are they all only having one voice assistant? So with AirPods, you know, you have Siri is native to that, but you could feed it through, you know, your app. Like if you had Alexa or you had uh, Google Assistant on your phone, you could feed it up into there. Um, but natively, they're all going to have their smart assistants baked into it. So with, you know, Apple right now, they just introduced the new H1 chip uh, in the AirPods version two. And I think that's interesting for a couple of reasons. The first is that it shows that Apple is dedicated to the long term for AirPods. They they gave it its own chip. You know, it used to be powered by the W1 chip, which is what's in like the Apple Watch. Um, but they've now since created its own sort of chip architecture specifically for hearable type devices. And the first application that is very unique to this type of chip is Hey Siri uh, activation. You just speak it out loud. Um, with the Galaxy Buds, you can just tap on them. And that's kind of, I think, what we're going to see is that as these devices mature um, and as more of the smart assistant providers get into the space, you know, it's going to be, you know, whereas the smart speakers represent sort of the far field, um, I think where the smart assistant battleground is going to move to along with the car and the office and some of the different environments is going to be in the near field. It's going to be in your in-the-ear devices. Right. So that's an important area to keep an eye on. I mean, I think we've we've been just – bowled over by all the smart speaker stats and hearable is actually probably a little more interesting in ways because <laughs> you can take them everywhere you go. You talk about ambient mm -hmm. computing and ubiquity. There you go. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that if you think about this idea of, you know, I think Breck and Sella, uh, does a really good job of kind of really helping people to visualize the importance of a smart speaker. And that is that um, one of the major benefits of smart speakers is that they sort of act as training wheels. You know, they're, they're kind of like these conditional devices that help people to create this behavior where they get comfortable with asking Alexa or Google Assistant for more and more things. And I think that as like time goes on over the next, say, three to five years, as people become more and more dependent and they're offloading more of their smartphone related tasks to their smart assistants, I think it's logical to think that people will start to, um, they'll kind of demand to have that functionality available on them at all times. And I think that that really lends itself to this idea of hearables. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I feel like we demand to have the functionality of essentially the internet at our disposal at all times <laughs> right. with our smartphones. And then mm -hmm. you just take it to the next form of computing and interaction, which is voice. And how does that become available all the time? It has to be in a hearable because you don't need to be mm -hmm. next to, like you said, the far field speaker. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So that's where you see this all headed. Like the hearable will become ubiquitous. Everyone's going to be wearing them. Is it when we say hearables, are we talking just the in-ear devices or is there anything else to mention? Like whether it's a watch or... No. Yeah, that's that's a great point. So, you know, like when I was at the Voice Summit, one of the points I made when I was on the Hearables panel was that we have to recognize that there has been a, a pretty dramatic behavioral shift that's occurred since 2016 when AirPods debuted, more so like 2017 and on because they came out in the Christmas season. And it's become socially acceptable now to wear uh, in the ear devices for long periods of time. I mean, you talk to a lot of people that have AirPods and they'll say, yeah, I just wear them even when I'm not listening to music or a podcast or uh, my phone, because I just know that I'm going to be kind of sinking into my audio environment at some point. And I think that what we might end up seeing are a variety of form factors. You know, there's some really interesting companies that are doing things like creating earrings um, that will be, that have speakers in them. You know, you have the Bose AR frames that have speakers right near the ears. Um, you know, look at hearing aids. For a long time, hearing aids have been stigmatized as, you know, being something that only old people wear or something like that. But um, what's 
really interesting about that form factor is that it allows for all day usage and it's super, super discreet. So if you're going to have this world where people are sort of synced into their digital environment for longer and longer periods of time, where they're just sort of passively consuming uh, content, um, I think it's I, I think it's kind of plausible to think that we might have form factors like today's hearing aids that are uh, really conducive to like all day usage and are really discreet so that people can't even really tell that you're wearing something in your ears. I love the idea of the earrings. And I think for women, like making it mm-hmm. fashionable is huge. Totally. Um, as far as the social etiquette piece, I mean, this is kind of interesting to me. I actually would leave my AirPods in all the time, but I get a headache because I'm really sensitive to totally. Bluetooth. Is there anything that you know as far as the tech, like to make it safer and to reduce the EMFs that are physically on our body if we were to wear these all day? So that's, I think that's going to be where the rubber meets the road. And that's where I think we're going to have to figure out, um, you know, ways around that. So like one interesting scenario could be that you start to use, um, like the AirPods case, for example, as more of the receiver for a lot of, so like today you're streaming all that content from your phone up to your AirPods. So like in the future, maybe what we see is it, it's actually being housed. A lot of that content's being housed in the AirPods case itself. And then it's being streamed in lower bandwidths up to there um, because it can sort of do it more so on the edge and not as much relying on the cloud. Um, But it is something that I think we're going to have to grapple with, which is something that I think applies to things beyond just wearables and hearables is just this idea that we're like outfitting our bodies with technology and there's all kinds of different signals and, you know, the like. And I just, I I do think that there is something to be said for that. And I don't have, you know, a clear cut definitive answer for how we solve that. If you write a blog or publish articles, you know how much time and effort it takes to create valuable content. Don't limit your reach to readers only. Let your audience listen, too. With Trinity Audio, publishers and bloggers can turn their readers into listeners by turning their written content into lifelike speech. Voice is taking hold because it's the ultimate convenient way to consume content anytime, anywhere. Your audience wants to listen, so give them the option. Visit trinityaudio.ai. Something that we should touch on, of course, is flash briefing. And the reason this relates to hearables is we're, we're talking about passive consumption of content, always mm-hmm. on, always available, whether that's through hearables or the voice assistant. And flash briefing, I mean, you and I have discussed this a few times. It's such a gem. It's so powerful. And if you think of somebody like on their way to work or at the gym mm-hmm. or in the car and they have that accessibility to something like flash briefing, which for anyone who at this point doesn't know, flash briefing is something on Alexa where you can subscribe to mini podcasts, briefcasts, if you will, and they play in a row, sort of like a feed, usually about a minute or two long, and they can be on any subject, whether it's news or productivity tips or meditation or marketing, whatever it is. And Dave, you have a flash briefing. Tell us about what you do on your briefing. So I I think you make a really good point. For me personally, what I do is I write a daily blog post and then I go and I record a flash briefing to sort of give a a 60 second tease of what that post is about. So for me, I use it as a promotional vehicle for a different piece of content. And I always end with, and you can read more at futureear.co. And I think that's representative of where this could go. And it's I'm, I'm, I'm equal parts uh, a little disappointed by the way that Amazon hasn't, um, I think, made this the star of the smart speakers because it really – it's a unique capability of Amazon Alexa's devices and it's such a powerful use case if it's done and, and, and proliferated properly. I mean, there are so many different examples of how this could be done and I think that – the way I view it is, you know, this is like the precursor to what I'm envisioning as like audio social media, you know, and just like you said, where you start, you know, you're, you're uh, on a commute or whatever it might be, and you're consuming on demand the different kind of content that you want to consume on a regular basis. You know that these are the different sources, whether it be your five different news sources and 
then three things that are related to your profession and then two things that are related to things that you're passionate about like cooking or sports or whatever that might be and you get a 10 minute rundown on a daily basis from all the different sources that you enjoy I just think that is so profound and powerful in like the future and I think that there's so much potential there that that Amazon should be if I were them like putting you know front and center with smart speakers completely agree and it was featured more in the lexi app initially but has has been Mm -hmm. relegated to the settings area of the app lately (laughs) Uh, anyway i mean i hope that it gets a little more play um but if it doesn't i think there are other ways hopefully that we can take flash briefing and perhaps put it on other platforms or their voice assistants it's really the power of the idea of the briefcast that is is so great. And, you know, what you're saying, like making social media kind of audible and curating it, like we are so overwhelmed with just even your Twitter feed, let alone Mm -hmm. all the other networks. How do you keep up? If you could just curate that into the things you care about, like take, take what was so great about Google reader. If you remember that from back in the day, Mm -hmm. this is like the new RSS. Well, that's, I mean, and that kind of hits at, you're you're so spot on. I mean, I think that's what is so desperately needed. And ultimately, I think that's going to be what wins out here in the next few years are ways to better curate your attention and, and, you know, cut out so much of the noise. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Twitter, but I'll be the first to admit that I spend, you know, a good majority of the time that I'm on there, um, parsing through noise, you know, I'm just trying to find the things that I actually care about and the things that I want. And so I think that the beauty and the potential of this is that if you were able to intelligently connect people to the types of content that they wanted, using the power of a smart assistant, uh, through mediums like, you know, a smart speaker or hearable, I just think that's got so much potential and it could be so powerful. It really could be so powerful. Well, We're out of time for now, but Dave, let people know where they can connect with you and find your blog and your flash briefing. Yeah, totally. Uh, So you can find me on Twitter at uh, at Oaktree Dave, at Oaktree underscore Dave, sorry, at Oaktree underscore Dave. And then you can also check out my blog at uh, futureear.co, futureear.co. Futureear.co. And that only has one E because it's like a cool marketing way of spelling it. So it's F-U-T-U-R-E-A-R.co. I bought I bought both URLs. Um, but yeah, what what I didn't realize initially was that I was that if it's just with one E, then it's also future AR and somebody's squatting on that. So I had to do dot co. Somebody's squatting on future future AR.com. So that, that top level domain battle and just black market insanity needs to go. I mean, that's voice first. It's like, let's get away from that. <laughs> totally agree. All right, Dave, thank you so much. It was really great talking with you. Thanks, Emily. I appreciate it. Hey, do you have an Amazon Echo device? Then you have to take advantage of Flash Briefing, the short daily news offering on Alexa. It's free and easy to set up. You can catch my daily briefing, the voice marketing flash briefing, Daily Beetle Moment, by going to bit.ly slash beetle flash. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash B-E-E-T-L-E flash, all lowercase. Or just search Amazon or your Alexa app for Beetle Moment Voice Marketing. My goal with this flash briefing is to fracture Alexa's rubric. Come check it out. For more about the show or to consult with me, visit BeetleMoment.com. Tweet me at Emily Bender. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week.